In this astrophotonary physics math problem, we're going to calculate centripetal acceleration. So let's look at this problem. Let's estimate the acceleration of a car as it goes around a curve. The radius of a segment of a typical cloverleaf interchange is around 20 meters. So here's the center of the circle, and that is the radius. It's telling you r, and you know because it's giving you a meter, which is a length value, and 20 meters is the quantity. So we know that that is r. And a car might take the curve with a constant speed of 10 meters per second. So they're already telling you the speed is 10 meters per second. And it's always tangent to the curve. So that would be our velocity, because I already drew the direction of what it's going in. And it's in 10 meters per second is the quantity. So the car has a mass around 1,500 kilograms. What is the centripetal force? So we want to. First of all, we want to estimate the acceleration, and then B, we want to find out the centripetal force. So we're given R is 20 meters. We're given V is 10 meters per second. And we're also given mass. And mass is 1,500 kilograms. The next line down, we want to identify what it is we're trying to do. So I've already done that in both A and B. We want to find the acceleration and the, the centripetal force. Since we are looking at things going in circles, things going in circles are centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. So we already know our equations. Our equations are centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R. And this is just Newton's second law. Sum of the forces is equal to ma. So let's go ahead and solve the first one. We want to solve for centripetal acceleration. By definition, it is v squared over r. So all we need to do is plug in v, and it is 10 meters per second. And we need to square it. And then we need to divide by r which is 20 meters. Now letters and numbers square, so let's go do both. 10 squared, let's go to our Google calculator. Type in 10 x to the y squared. So you can check it up there, 10 squared, and that's 100. So we get our value of 100. But then you also need to square the m and the s. So m gets squared, so it's meters squared divided by second squared. So you don't have to put them that way. If you want to, you can go ahead and put them in a different format. You can just say meter, meter, and second, second. What that is is a meter times a meter. It's meter squared, and that's a second times a second, which is second squared. It's the same thing. Now let's put the other values in. Here's the 20. So we still keep our division symbol and we put our 20 in, but now I get this meter. So I'm just going to add it over here to this side where all the letters are. Now we divide out, divide out like things. So I got a like thing on the bottom and a like thing on the top. So I can easily divide those out. And I'm left with one meter on the top and a second second on the bottom. So now we have 100 divided by 20. That is five. And now we have a meter on the top. And then we have seconds times seconds on the bottom, and I'm just going to go ahead and put it as seconds squared. We have a positive value here for centripetal acceleration, so we need to put a direction in here. So our direction for a centripetal acceleration is towards the center of the circle. So I'm just going to say towards center. And that's my answer. Centripetal acceleration always points to the center of the circle. Same thing with centripetal force. So now we're going to go on to the second part. And the second part is, is looking for centripetal force. So centripetal force is just Newton's second law. So we have our sum of the forces 
And that is equal to, well, let's go rid of the sum first. So we have centripetal force is equal to MA centripetal. So there's your F equals MA, Newton's second law. We only have one force that we're looking at right now, and that's the only thing we want is the centripetal force, so I didn't have to sum it. So now let's substitute everything in. Our mass is 1,500 kilograms. And then our acceleration is positive 5 meters per second squared. Then all we need to do is multiply it out. So I'll come to my calculator, clear it out. We want to put in 1,500 and multiply it by 5. And we get 7,500 is our answer. So I'll say equals 7,500. And now our units are kilogram meter per second squared. Well, a kilogram meter per second squared is the same thing as a Newton. So you can leave it as kilogram meter per second squared if you so desire and leave your centripetal force here. And of course, you have to put a direction. So once again, it's towards center. Or you can erase the kilogram meters per second squared and put it as newtons. Remember, we define a newton as a kilogram meter per second squared. So we box our answer. And now you decide, do you want to leave it as kilogram meter per second squared? That's fine. You can put the positive symbol in there, that's fine. I've already declared to the center. Or I can just go ahead and erase kilogram meter per second squared. Since we know that that is a Newton, I can just put a Newton in there. And that's equally as fine. You can leave it as kilogram meter per second squared or Newtons. And that's how we solve an example of centripetal acceleration and centripetal force.